cost of fire. Brigades across the region are organising events to ram home the safety message. To mark Fire Safety Week, Look East brings you Firewatch. We'll be joining firefighters on the front line and seeking out the best advice to keep you and your home safe. Last year in this region, 47 people lost their lives in fires. Joining us now from fire headquarters in Norfolk, here's Kim Riley. Thank you very much, Stuart. The fact is that most deaths through fire happen in the home, and that's what this week is really all about, reducing the number of deaths, cutting the number of accidents and injuries. Now, this little chap, the smoke alarm, has actually worked wonders. Ten years ago, about 9% of us had one of these. Now, 75% of homes do, and they really are achieving results. I think a really nice thing this week is the Northamptonshire Fire Service is giving a free one of these to every newborn baby in the county. I think it's a lovely idea. Now, we'll talk more about smoke alarms later in the week, and actually, they aren't always a guarantee of safety. We'll also talk about another killer, the chip pan fire. Well, last year, about 59 Norfolk firemen and firefighters in general were killed in the li were, were injured, I should say, in the line of duty. It's a dangerous business, and to get a measure of the sort of perils they face, I join them for the day. Now, this is the first stop for any new raw recruit like myself to the fire service. This is Steve, and he's in charge of the stores here. Now, they're going to issue me with my kit, and there's quite a lot of it, I must say. In fact, there's 1,300 pounds worth of it. Well, here I am. I'm fully equipped. I'm ready to fight a fire. Well, not perhaps quite. We've come to Norwich Airport, and this is a, an exercise, a combined exercise, between the Norfolk Fire Service and the Airport Fire Brigade around a very, very hot fuselage. This is all part of regular training for the crews at the Norwich and Sproston fire stations, a simulator where the flames behave just like the real thing. Teamwork is the key. Dousing the flames is dangerous enough. They must also learn to deal with intense heat. In a training situation, we roughly average about 200, 250 degrees centigrade, generally no more. In real fire situations, it can easily accelerate up to 400 degrees centigrade in an ordinary front room fire, to and beyond that, to 1,000 degrees centigrade. Then it was my turn to put on breathing apparatus and head into the fuselage that was rapidly filling with smoke. As the heat rises, your brain heats up too. It's easy to lose your concentration. After some uncomfortable moments when I couldn't see anything at all, it was all down to edging gingerly forward, it was back into daylight. First step. It had only lasted a few minutes, but for me, this was a first lesson in the hazards our firefighters cope with every day. Great. Thank well you done. very much, Nick. Well done. Excellent. That's good. That's good. That was the first time, and hopefully the last. Truer words were never spoken. It's truer words were never spoken. This is the central control room at Heliset. This is actually where your 999 calls come in. Now, 18 months or so ago, they invested £1.2 million pounds here. This is real state of the art. Let's show you what happens when a 999 call registers here. I think we can get it up on the screen any moment now. Yes, there we go. And that's instant, instantly cancelled there. Now, um, a little bit later, you saw him helping me with my uh, breathing apparatus. Here he is again, Nick Excel. How quickly can you respond? Right, as soon as um, the control operators have actually gained the information that they require and they start to process the call, mobilisation takes about seven seconds and possibly no more. You've got to understand that uh, obviously some people who call the uh, fire brigade are strangers to the area or they may be in a distressed state and the control operators using their skill actually have to glean all the relevant information that they need. But seven seconds is the best you can do, it doesn't sound too oh, bad. Sorry. Thank you Nick, very much indeed. Well actually this week we're recording a sort of video diary and it's been quite a, a quiet day for the Norfolk Fire Service today but um, we've got some uh, closed circuit TV pictures that have actually just come in. Let's have a look at them. Uh, these uh, were taken in St Crispin's flyover in Norwich. Two cars collided on a wet road. One woman had to be cut from the wreckage. Three people were taken to hospital. We understand the injuries are not serious, but do be careful, of course, if you're driving on wet roads tonight. Tomorrow, we report from Stansted on the firefighters who keep vigil at what is now Britain's fastest growing airport. A few little notes for you now. If you're in Bedford tomorrow, why not pop along to Harper Square? At 11 a.m., you can see the mayor and his good lady rescued from a rooftop. There'll also be a full safety demonstration. The Suffolk Fire Service will be in the centre of Felixstowe between 10 a.m. 
and 4 p.m. And Northamptonshire's Chip Pan Demonstration Unit, no less, will be at Avon Cosmetics Car Park in Northampton all day. There's plenty more going on. Check with your local fire brigade for details. That's it Parking for now. Fire Safety Week with a series of special reports. Firewatch joins firefighters across the region who are trying to cut the number of people killed and injured. Last year in this region, 47 people lost their lives in fires. So let's join Kim Riley at the training school of the Norfolk Fire Service. It's still a killer and it's a serious cause of injuries, the chip pan fire. In the region last year, more than 300 people were injured by chip pan fires. We've come to the Norfolk Fire Service training school and Harry's going to show us how to handle them. But first, what not to do? That's what happens when you add water. The water drops to the bottom of the blazing pan, flashes to steam, expands and expels the oil, with often disastrous results. So what should you do? The best remedy is a fire blanket, but if you don't have one, a damp tea towel will do the job. That's damp, not wet. No, Kim, you definitely don't put a wet tea towel onto a chip pan. What you should do is take the tea towel, uh, thoroughly soak it, and then wring as much water out as possible, and then use the uh, tea towel to put out the chip pan fire. So water is a disaster? Putting water into a chip pan fire is an absolute disaster, yes. Well, the message there is very clear. If you have a pan fire, for goodness sake, don't add water. Now, this rather grim place behind me is the smokehouse used by Norfolk Fire Service for a lot of very important training. And they're going to be trying to smoke me out in a moment or two. But before they do that, let's take you down to Essex, where we meet the fire crews at Stansted Airport. They say this can be one of the loneliest places on earth, the fire service watch room at Stansted. It may be dinner time on Christmas Day, but this room is never empty. Exercise, aircraft well alight. Fire ground, full attendance. The 70 firefighters at the airport fire service have some impressive hardware, including a brand new fleet of Dutch-built Cronenberg appliances at £400,000 apiece. There are four watches at Stansted, with 17 crew on each watch. The fire cover they provide has a direct link with the number and size of aircraft allowed to use the airport. No fire service, no landings or takeoffs. The cover has to be specially upgraded to allow the very largest craft into Stansted. Regular hot fire training, an important part of the firefighter's duties. We have to maintain a high standard. Uh, we're tested by the CIA every four years. Um, we have to go back for recertification, but we do an hour and a half's training on every shift. Because of the infrequency of aircraft incidents and aircraft fires, um, it is really important that we use realistic training and these rigs help us to do that. They hope a big disaster never happens, but the Stansted fire crews have the equipment and the expertise to cope just in case it does. The firefighters of Stansted ready for action. This must be the least cosy living room I've ever been in and it's going to get even more uncomfortable in a moment or two. Before I do that, let's catch up with our video diary of what's been happening in Norfolk in the past 24 hours. The main control room has been busy with 999 calls, illustrating, if nothing else, that a firefighter's work is full of variety. Thank you, Dan. Bye. The retained crew from Akel turned out last night to tackle a blaze at a remote cottage at Flegborough. At one point, crews had to be pulled out after the roof collapsed. A chemical spillage from a crop sprayer at Stowe Bridge was tackled first by a crew from Downham Market. The chemical incident unit at Sprouston arrived just after midday and they made the roads safe. And there was a happy ending for Digger the dog, who got into a real hole last night under a pile of concrete at Colkirk. Crews from Fakenham used airbags to bring him to safety. Right, it's seriously smoky in here. Let's tell you about some events tomorrow very quickly. The Suffolk Brigade are at Felixstowe and Saxmundham between 10 and 4. The Bedfordshire Brigade in action at Queensway Hall Dunstable. That's at 11 a.m. Tonight, there are special surgeries on fire safety at Sandy, Shefford and Woburn fire stations starting at 7.30 tonight. Bring along your old chip pan. There's a chip pan amnesty on. You can get 10%, apparently, off the cost of a deep fat fryer, which sounds like a great idea. Another great idea is to get out of here fast. The fire brigade say the best thing to do in smoke is to drop to the ground and keep very low where there's more air. We'll be back, we hope, 
with more Firewatch tomorrow. Good night. <laughs> Firewatch tonight. Kim Riley reports on the potential dangers of aerosols and an overnight rescue by the fire service in Norfolk. Last night on Look East, we were talking about chip pan fires. And sure enough, overnight, there was a chip pan fire. One man had to be rescued. But after the emergency occurred, he did all the right things. The second floor flat in Norwich had filled with acrid white smoke. The occupier dialed 999. The Norwich crews were there within four minutes. He turned off the heat beneath the pan of oil, but unable to tackle the blaze, closed the kitchen door and waited with his dog on the balcony. Both were brought to safety. An ambulance was standing by, the man wasn't injured, nor was his dog. Also last night, in the same area of the city, the Norwich station dealt with a blazing car. In Suffolk, a thatched farmhouse at Thorndon near Eye was ablaze this afternoon, but no one was hurt. These pictures just in from a Look East film crew. Six appliances from Suffolk and Norfolk have been at the scene. The contents of the house were saved, the cause of the fire as yet unknown. These days, in our aerosols, we don't have CFCs, but there's actually a new danger. This is a portable gas cylinder, and inside it's got a mixture of propane and butane, and that's exactly, in fact, the mixture that's in this aerosol. It's actually a deodorant. Now, if you use it straightforwardly, sensibly, no problem. But if you don't, you could have real trouble. That's what can happen when an aerosol meets flame, a devastating explosion. We have, I believe, had instances where these have actually exploded inside the house, uh, having just been stood on a windowsill on a hot day behind glass. So if you had to sum up the advice to people, what would it be? Um, always read the instructions on the back, especially the small print containing the warnings, and uh, always try and keep them away from any source of ignition. That's what can happen to an aerosol. As for gas cylinders, best stored in the garage or garden shed, not in the house. So be warned, those aerosols can be quite explosive. Now we're off to Geddington in Northamptonshire to meet a band of volunteers, a dedicated group of firefighters who only very rarely get to fight fires. <laughs> Imagine Trumpton brought to life, a village where everyone talks to each other because their very own fire brigade makes sure they do. I'm a shoe designer, but I'm also a postmaster general. I'm a charter surveyor, but I'm really a fire marshal. I'm the vicar of Geddington and I'm the chaplain general. The Geddington Volunteer Fire Brigade was formed during the fire strike of 1970. But when the strike ended, they didn't want to. Since then, they've fought just one fire. They leave the big stuff to the fire brigade proper and concentrate on helping people out. We've just got the same outlook. I think that's what it's all about. We, we serve and we have fun doing so. I suppose you could say we're a cross between Dad's army and men behaving badly, really. What about the women? I mean, what, what kind of involvement do they have? Well, yeah, they, they hold the hoses from time to time. They give us help at the squirt, and, of course, they carry on the coal, which is the good thing for women to do. So what do those slightly more politically correct real firefighters make of it all? If we're going to be associated with people such as this, um, they need to get on with what they do well, which is fundraising for local people in the village, and we'll do what we do well. Good morning. Hi. Today, the Geddington guys are out distributing fire blankets as part of Firewatch Week. And after all that exertion, time to get the on-board barrel of beer flowing at what they call the station, the pub, that is. Then it's off to another call-out, as long as it's not a fire, you understand. There we are, a nice quirky tale from Northamptonshire. Let's um, introduce you now to a rather special piece of equipment. This is the thermal imaging camera. There are 10 of them in Norfolk at the moment. They cost about five and a half thousand pounds a piece, so they're not cheap, but they hope eventually to have one on every station. That's 40. Now, what they allow you to do, in a nutshell, is to see in the smoke and the dark. Let's just show you how they work. We've come to our dark room, and here we are. This is what you see, not a very flattering view of me, through our normal electronic camera with the help of a torch. If I switch the torch off, you lose me. Let's pick me up, though, via the thermal imaging camera. Here I am, as large as life. And if you look in the background, there are a couple of items here that have been heated up, so they're very, very hot, and you can see how that's picking them out. It's an absolute boon, this piece of equipment, soon to be spread across the county and across the region. That's it for now from Firewatch, via the thermal imaging camera. Back to the studio. 
has claimed the lives of two people is being treated as suspicious. Fire crews were called to a bungalow in Wisbeach this morning after a passerby reported smoke and flames pouring from the windows. Forensic teams spent most of this afternoon combing through the debris at the bungalow in Moneybank. Fire crews were called to the scene at about quarter past 11 when a passerby raised the alarm after witnessing a cloud of smoke and flames belching from the property. It's not yet clear how the blaze started, but fire crews believe it could be arson. The arson charge was faced on arrival at the scene with a severe fire in the front part of the, of the bungalow. Um, he wasn't aware whether anybody was in the, in the building at the time and had to make, make an entry into the, into the house and commit breathing apparatus wearers to fight the fire. Firefighters found two bodies in the living room of the property. Their identities have not yet been released, but it's thought to be a middle-aged married couple. Neighbours said they were shocked by the tragedy. But they seem to be a very nice couple that I can tell you about. They do anything to go out of their way and help anybody, you know. Uh, if you ask them for anything, no problem. They'd always help me out. Every time they went on holiday, they just said to me, would you mind looking after, you know, keeping on the property and I kept on the property for all that. And odd Sunday mornings, I just go around, they just call me around for a cup of tea. Due to the uncertainty of the circumstances surrounding the cause of the fire, the investigation is now a police matter. Melissa Jackson, Look East, Wisbeach. We've been running a special series to mark Fire Safety Week as brigades across the region seek to cut the toll of death and injuries from fire. Sadly, of course, we've already reported tonight on the deaths of two people in Wisbeach. And we start Fire Watch this evening with another blaze that could have ended in tragedy. This stack fire at Great Cressingham in Norfolk broke out after a number of children were seen playing around it. There were cavities between the bales and the fire spread rapidly. The police and fire crews say the end result could so easily have been the death of one or more of the children. This was what remained tonight of Snell's car repair garage at Barrow near Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk. 45 firefighters have been at the scene, cars were set alight as gas cylinders exploded and nearby homes were evacuated. On our first fire watch, we reported that 75% of homes now have smoke alarms, and there's no doubt they have saved many lives. But there's a shock statistic you may not know. In this region, it's reckoned a quarter of a million smoke alarms aren't working. That means lives are needlessly being lost. A working smoke alarm gives that vital early warning. If the battery's flat or been removed, the result can be disastrous. Sue Abbott and her four children from Haverhill in Suffolk were lucky to escape with their lives. I smelt something in my sleep and gradually it woke me up and I realised there was a fire. The smoke was just gagging me. So when I got up, I checked, found out it was in my son's room because I'd opened his door very slightly and just you couldn't see the room, it was just thick smoke. So my first reaction was to get the other three out and to find the fire brigade up. I didn't actually think of anything but getting them out of the house. The Abbott family's smoke alarm hadn't worked for a very good reason. <laughs> yes, well, I took the battery out of it when I was cooking one night and didn't put it back. To be protected, you should check the battery by pressing the test button once a month. Once a year, clean or vacuum the inside to ensure dust isn't blocking the sensor and change the battery, ideally on the same date each year. If you have only one smoke alarm, fit it in the hallway. But for best protection, you need one or more on every level of the house. Well, if you don't want to have to worry about batteries, how about these? What they're calling a new generation of smoke alarms. They're powered by lithium cells, they're tamper-proof, and they last for ten years. They cost, instantly about £25. Now, we used to say firemen. Now we say firefighter. Women are beginning to play a more prominent frontline role. Damien Grammaticus has been to Linton in Cambridgeshire to meet two of them. Foreman Musk. Sub. Lynn Foreman Jackson. Sub. Foreman Collins. Sub. No longer is the fire service a male preserve. For three years, women have been part of the Linton retained crew. Often the first two incidents across South Cambridgeshire, they're in the front line of the services work. We do exactly the same. Everybody does the same drills, the same jobs and shouts. There's no leniency. 
The women are trained to do all tasks, including using heavy cutting equipment to free people trapped in crushed vehicles. Of the region's fire services, three, Norfolk, Essex and Suffolk, employ less than six female firefighters. Cambridgeshire is one of the best. It has ten. In years gone by, it was predominantly, if not exclusively, a, a male orientated profession. Um, however, times are changing and we are now openly welcoming um, applications for employment um, from um, all uh, races and genders. Um, it's an equal opportunity to um, employ the fire service. In her regular job, retained firewoman Stephanie Collins is a warehouse operative. She's already been called out over 150 times this year. You do need a head for heights. Um, obviously, if you're claustrophobic, it's not going to work either. Um, you need to be up to a reasonable standard of fitness and strength. Retained fire crews depend on local volunteers, but increasingly people work outside the communities in which they live, and the service is finding it more and more difficult to find recruits who can be on call 24 hours a day. Those who fit the bill are more and more likely to be women. Nine o'clock this morning and the Linton crew attend a chip pan fire. The two women are the only firefighters available for duty. In Cambridgeshire, at least, the service believes the day will come when women total a quarter of its staff. Doing a great job. A lot of chip pan fires around this week. Well, join us tomorrow for our last Firewatch roundup. Scrapyard. The blaze brought rush hour chaos to parts of Norwich. A man is being questioned by police about the fire. The police and firefighters were called to the scrapyard on Peacock Road at a quarter past three this morning. Residents had reported hearing explosions. The police came to the door, um, sort of knocking on it, and said to us, you know, get, get out real quick because uh, uh, some fire across the road. So we just jumped, threw our clothes on, got out as quick as possible, and uh, there it was outside a raging inferno. I mean, the intensity of the fire was very frightening, yes. I mean, embers were sort of shooting up sort of to the, le you know, the height of the roof. At one stage, 40 firefighters were tackling the blaze. With the yard known to contain potentially dangerous substances, residents were moved to the safety of a Salvation Army hostel. There was a well-developed fire with unknown cylinders in there, which is an explosive risk. We had chemicals, plastics, paraffins. Our course of action was to get the people out as quickly as possible. By first light, the fire had been brought under control, but the damping down process was hindered by the concentration of chemicals and problems in locating electricity cables. The entire contents of the yard were destroyed, along with £7,000 worth of equipment belonging to the campaign to legalise cannabis. Norfolk police say they're treating the fire as suspicious. A man has been arrested and is being questioned in connection with the inquiry. Steve Kingston, Look East, Norwich. Crews were called to her sheltered housing unit in Stockfold High Street. Mid Bedfordshire councils confirmed that the homes were not fitted with smoke alarms. And to be good firefighter has to do. Right now, this is the place, the pole drop, and um, actually it looks an awfully long way down. Don't fancy it at all. So while I get my confidence together, let's look back at some of the messages we've given you this week on Firewatch. We began with a joint exercise between the Norfolk and Norwich Airport fire crews. I was given the full fireman's kit and with breathing apparatus was able to get a flavour of the hazards firefighters experience every day, edging forward in thick smoke through the special simulator. That was the first time and hopefully the last. We spent a day with the crews of the Stansted Airport fire service. We visited a real-life Trumpton. we spotlighted the growing number of women now becoming firefighters. We've seen the dangers of pouring water on a chip pan fire. The hazards when many aerosols meet extreme heat. And the gas cylinders it's best not to store in your home. We've shown you what to do in thick smoke. And keep very low where there's more air. We've spotlighted the dangers of the smoke alarms that don't work. I took the battery out of it and I was cooking one night and didn't put it back. And seen how thermal imaging cameras can help save lives. We've travelled with the crews and brought you dramatic pictures of the fires tackled by Norfolk Fire Service this week. At Thorndon is my pump fix, 
It has a £15 million budget this year, but there's always pressure for economies. We're obviously always looking at resources, and we, we always try and uh, meet the standards of fire cover. Uh, and where we can then transfer resources from the operational side, as it were, into fire safety, then we're also beginning to do that. Now, if there's one message perhaps you've got from Firewatch this week, could it be that you should go and check the battery on your smoke alarm? And if you haven't got a smoke alarm, get one, because who knows, it might even save your life. Right, the moment of truth has come. This is, they say, one of the longest drops in the... I believe was arson. Now, one member of the team can only watch his colleagues after receiving very serious injuries tackling the outbreak. I mean, the flames were going through the roof, so once the flames have gone through the roof, you know, you know you've got a, a good job on your hands, and that was a big fire. I fell off the roof and fell 30 foot, and done both of my knees in, and also I fractured my right femur bone in three different places, and what the surgeons have done at Norfolk and Norwich Hospital, they've basically put a rod from my kneecap right up to my pelvis, sort of holding uh, three fractures in place. Can you help the police? Ring Crime Stoppers on 0800 treble 5 treble 1. You don't have to give your name and you could earn a Crime Stoppers Trust award. So ring 0800 treble 5 treble 1 now.